Hello and welcome to part four, the final part of the helicopter tutorial. So the final thing we need to do here is make it so that we can turn the helicopter and pitch the helicopter. So back in the event graph, this is actually going to be not too difficult. We're going to right click and say um, add heli, or what is it called? Input access heli turn. So we're going to implement this heli turn event, which again, we have it bound to our left and right on the mouse, our mouse X. So basically, when the mouse is moving to the right, this is going to be set to 1, and when it's moving to the left, it's going to be set to negative 1. So we want to take this value, and we want to turn the helicopter based off that value. So to do that, we're going to drag in um, our get, get turn speed function. Oh, we haven't actually written that function yet. So we're going to go ahead and write that function real quick, because we're going to need it. So make a new function and call it get turn speed and drag it into the private category and this function we want to set it to private and we can also set it to pure and const since it's basically just going to get us calculate something for us so inside of here we want to limit the turn speed um, based off of if the blades are turning because if you think about it, if you're just on the ground and the blades are not even on yet or maybe they're just just they're just turning on they're moving really slow you don't want to be able to rotate the helicopter because you wouldn't be able to in real life because the blades aren't spinning fast enough specifically the tail blade isn't spinning fast enough to be able to um rotate the helicopter so we want to we want to only allow rotation if the blades are rotating fast enough so to do that we're going to get our current lift which is directly correlated to the blades rotation speed and we want to map this so map map range clamp we're going to map this to a rotation speed so the end range is zero or the end range a is zero the end range b is we're going to set to a, or not thousand um 400 so what this is saying is um anything between zero and 400 any lift amount between zero and 400 interpolate between zero and one oops i typed that wrong interpolate between zero and one for the turn speed so for example, if if our current lift is zero, which means the blades aren't on it, on at all, it's going to use zero for our turn speed and not allow us to turn at all. If it's 200, for example, it's going to use halfway between zero and one, which is uh, 0 0.5. So we're going to be able to turn a little bit, or half as much as we normally would. And if it's above 400, which means our blades are spinning pretty fast probably, then we're going to be able to have the full rotation enabled. And then we want to multiply that by our turn speed variable, or our turn speed constant. So float multiply. And we're going to take this value and return it. So if we just drag it over here and add a pin as a result, hook it up. All right, so this function's done. It's pretty straightforward. So now back in our event graph, we should be able to finish things up here. So we'll say get the turn speed. And we'll multiply that by this, which is essentially the direction we're trying to turn in. And we want to interpolate between our current turn and this turn, whatever it is. So we'll say f interp2. And we're going to pass our current turn. Uh, where is it? Under private, current turn, which we haven't set yet. We'll set that in a second and our target, which is whatever the player is currently trying to turn to. And the delta time, we're just gonna use get world, like type, get world delta, can't type, seconds. And the interpolation is, uh, you can set this to whatever you want. It's basically um, like after you stop turning, how long it keeps turning, if that makes sense. Uh, I had it set to 2 in my example, but you can kind of play with that value if you want. And then this is going to be our new current turn. And then finally, we're going to use this new current turn value to actually turn our plane. So we're going to say add actor world, I can't type, add actor world rotation. And again, we want to right click and split this, right click and split because we only want to yaw the plane in this case. Or I keep saying plane, because I, I just did a plane tutorial, but the helicopter, <laughs> sorry, I've probably said plane like a thousand times. I mean, I mean the helicopter. 
And then in addition to yawling the helicopter, we also want to roll it so that, because that's kind of the way helicopters fly, they kind of roll in the direction they're trying to turn. So we're also going to say set actor rotation. And again, we only want to affect the yaw. So we're going to split this and we're going to get actor rotation. And we're going to split this as well. And we're going to keep the yaw, or we're going to keep the pitch in the yaw. And the roll we're going to set based on whatever, however much we're turning. So we're going to take this turn rate and multiply it by some value. And again, this turn rate is value from negative one to positive one. So whatever value you you set here, I'm going to set 40. But whatever value you set here is the amount that it's going to roll if you're turning at the fastest speed you can turn. So you don't want to set it to something like 90 or anything like that, because then the plane will be rolled 90 degrees on its side. Or I did it again. The helicopter will be rolled 90 degrees, which you obviously you don't want. So something around 40 is probably good. So that will kind of give it the illusion that it's, you know, banking into its turn. Um, okay, so let's file, save all of this, and let's see if we can turn our helicopter now. I think I did all of that correct. So we get in here, and you'll notice if we go left and right with the mouse right now, it's not doing anything. And that's because we limited the turn so that you, you can only do it once the blades start to turn. But once we get the blades going, you can see I can start rocking it a little bit. And, and let me take off here completely. And now that I'm in the air, if I turn, you'll see the plane turns and it kind of it kind of like um, rolls in that direction as well to give it the effect that it's, you know, turning into its turn or whatever you want to call it. All right, and then the last thing we need to do is make it pitch so that we can actually go forward and not just left and right. So let's close this. And to do that, we have our Healy pitch. So we'll say input action Healy what did I call it? Input action. Oh, it's axis. Input axis Healy pitch. So inside of here, we're going to do something kind of similar to what we did up here, but it's going to be slightly different for the pitch. So again, we want to take the current speed. I'm just going to copy this and this and this and this and this because we pretty much want all of that more or less. So copy everything I just selected up there, paste it down here. But Oh, come on, mouse. But instead of the current turn, we want to use the current pitch. So make sure you fix that, and then make sure you hook this up to the axis value. And then we want to set our current pitch. So set the current pitch to this, like so. And then now that our current pitch is set, we essentially just want to set our pitch to that value, but we want to make sure that the pitch does not get above 90 because we don't want the helicopter to do a backflip. And it also kind of, like I was saying before, it doesn't really work too well if you try to pitch something more than 90 degrees. So we're going to limit it to a value between negative 90 and positive 90. So um, we'll just drag off this pitch and we'll say float plus and get, get actor rotation, and split this, hook this up to the pitch. And we wanna check if this is in the range of negative 90 to positive 90, so we'll say in range. And I'm gonna use like negative 89 and positive 89 just so it can't actually get to 90. And then do a branch off of this. So assuming that it's in this range, then we'll go ahead and we'll set the actor local rotation to that value. So set actor, or not set, add actor local um, rotation. And we'll split this. And again, this is our pitch. So we'll just drag off this guy and set it to be our pitch. All right, so now if we save all of this and we run it, you can see again, if we try to pitch the mouse while we're on the ground, it doesn't do anything, which is good. But once we start taking off here, if I move the mouse, and it might feel backwards to you, depending on how you're used to flying, but you can see it pitches, and when we pitch forward, the plane, or the, hel <laughs> the helicopter actually flies forward. And so yeah, we can fly the helicopter around. And again, there's a tons of different values in here you can tweak if you don't like the feel of this. I've tried to expose things the best that I could for you guys, 
um, because there's there's tons of different ways to write helicopter code, obviously. But hopefully this gives you a really nice starting point and also showed you guys how to kind of switch between, you know, walking and getting into vehicles in a way that works pretty well. So yeah, if you enjoyed the tutorial, uh, please leave a like and subscribe. Thanks.